Exhibit A deals with the unusual shadow angles visible on several Apollo moon landing pictures. The claim is that the multiple shadow angles on pictures such as this one could not be achieved without using multiple light sources, indicating that the shots were taken on a soundstage and not on the moon, where the sun would be the only prominent light source. It's a really strange picture. It is the most Yes, yeah. well that, that's the most peculiar because if you look at this, obviously your light source is over there to get the shadow on this side of the rock. But then if you go over to this rock over here, whoa, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Now if you look at this one, the light source to get that shadow on these little bunches of rocks here is over here. So you've obviously got at least there might even be more. There's no way that a super bright light, for example, like the sun shining on the moon, could give you such diversity in the shadows. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some sort of secondary light source in this picture. There is definitely, so there's definitely a second light source. Definitely. And I would suggest there's more than one secondary light source. There's probably three. Yeah, the, there has to be at least three light sources to get the shadows that you're seeing in that picture. Okay. It's not one light source. So it's definitely not one light source. Definitely not. Let's look at this from a logical standpoint. Let's say that you are in charge of NASA's photographic fakery department, and it's your job to create pictures that successfully create the illusion of being shot on the moon. Would you take the time to set up this particular shot, which doesn't contain any of the lunar horizon, Apollo equipment, or even astronauts? Or would you spend that time creating a scene with some more obvious lunar components to make it look more believable? Of course, you would make sure it included something that clearly showed the scene was on the moon. There's no reason for NASA to have taken the time to fake this particular picture, which contains virtually nothing to indicate it was shot on the moon. However, let's say for the sake of discussion that NASA decided they needed a picture like this to complete their lunar portfolio, and your job was to make it look like it was shot on the moon. Would you place three different light sources all at different angles around your set? Or would you use a single light source? Of course, you would only use one light source if you were trying to make it look like it was shot on the moon. There is no reason for NASA to use multiple light sources when taking this photograph. Let's now say that, at nearly impossible odds, this picture was somehow accidentally taken during a moonset photo shoot. Would you release it to the public and still have it freely available on your website nearly 40 years later? Or would you immediately destroy it to ensure that it was never published? NASA had control over all of the Apollo photographs seen by the public and would never have released this picture if it so blatantly exposed their deception. Now, despite reaching the conclusion that multiple light sources must have been used, JARA does not do any experimentation to confirm that theory. So let's do that now. As you can see with a single light source, the shadow angles don't match the photograph, which is the whole reason that this is included in the hoax theory to begin with. However, adding a second light source starts to cause multiple shadows. Now, Chara does address this in his Exhibit A, saying that if you get the light source close enough to the object, the multiple shadow from the distant light will begin to dissipate. And that is the case. If you move the light closer, the uh, shadows start to line up. However, the more distant objects still have multiple shadows. And if we get multiple light sources in close enough, the lights are visible in the frame.
Experimentation with multiple light sources doesn't produce the results in this photograph. In order to avoid multiple shadows on the left and right rocks, the lights need to be placed very close to them. However, this causes the shadow of the foreground objects to be nearly completely obliterated and also still causes multiple shadows on the more distant rocks. Therefore, multiple light sources cannot be the reason for the multiple shadow angles. So the question remains how these multiple shadow angles are possible, and to answer this question, it's worth looking at why this picture was taken in the first place. It doesn't show any of the lunar horizon, nor does it include any Apollo equipment or astronauts other than the shadow of the photographer. In fact, this silhouette provides the clue needed to answer all of these questions. There is a disproportional distortion in the legs. They are elongated compared to the rest of the body. Now this has to be due to terrain sloping downward and then leveling off again as we move away from the photographer. This is also apparent in the footprint, noticeable in the upper right hand corner, as it is obviously on some angled terrain as well. Craters are a common feature which would cause this type of sloping terrain. It would also be a feature that the astronauts would be likely to photograph. So instead of using flat terrain, let's experiment using a crater-shaped terrain. The skeptics have claimed that that is like, um, like this part here is like a crater of some sort. Even so, that does, that's not going to explain the changes in the direction of shadow. I mean, the sun is either over there casting these shadows or over here casting these shadows. And there's definitely a light behind the astronaut or the photographer casting that shadow, mm -hmm. right? And I'm guessing that these shadows here are lining up with the light source that's behind the photographer, but there's no explanation for where the hell these two side light sources are. Mm. And even if it's a crater, you can't have the light coming from two separate directions mm. inside the crater. The dominant light source has got to be the sun yeah. in this photo. So where is this other light source coming from? Jara makes the assumption that a crater could not be the cause of the multiple shadow angles, but let's do some experimentation to be sure. This bowl will work as an example of the concept, and we'll tape some uh, test rocks here onto the inner walls of the bowl. If we take the bowl outside so we can use the sun as the sole light source and look down into the bowl, something interesting happens. The rocks to the left have shadows angled to the right, and the rocks on the right have shadows angling to the left, just as we see in the Apollo photograph. The photograph was a fake. It was not taken during the lunar EVA. Not with the lighting conditions, and sure as hell not with the photographic equipment they reportedly took with them. No ifs, ands, or buts. The only way they could have been taken was on Earth, either with multiple spotlights, or a lens that wasn't even used on Apollo. If the photographer of this picture were standing on the edge of a crater, the rocks to his left and right on the sloping walls, the shadows would be distorted to point inward. Because this photograph would be possible on the moon, with the sun as the only light source, and using the lenses available on the Apollo missions, Exhibit A does not provide any evidence that the landings were faked.